All I can do is shake my head on this one. We are starting the factor off tonight with that absolutely disgusting case in Louisiana. It really goes to show you the damage that people can do with these evil acts. Wow, just mind blowing. She's a teacher and of course he is a former deputy and they're supposed to be the best of us. And they went really, really bad. Cynthia Perkins was born on April 13th, 1985 to Gregory and Angela Thompson. She grew up alongside her two siblings, Patricia and Paul. Cynthia had a fairly normal childhood. Her mother described her as a loving and compassionate individual, adored by all who had the pleasure of knowing her. Eventually, she got married to a man named James Jones. Together, they had three children, and their family settled in Louisiana during the early 2010s. In 2012, Cynthia began her career as a teacher at Live Oak Middle School. However, she only lasted one year there as she transferred to North Live Oak Elementary School in 2013. After three years, she furthered her career by joining the faculty at Westside Junior High School. While Cynthia's career was taking off, her personal life was unraveling as cracks began to show in her relationship. Ultimately, she and her husband divorced, with the latter gaining sole custody of their three children. Cynthia didn't remain single for long, though. She would eventually meet and swiftly fall in love with a man named Dennis Perkins, who was nine years her senior. Dennis was a commander of the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office SWAT unit. Like Cynthia, he was also previously married. He had one son with his then-wife, Darla Gale Hood, before they separated in 2011, after she accused him of harming her. Dennis certainly did not make life easy for his ex-wife after their divorce. As outlined in Darla's police report, her ex-husband engaged in a series of disturbing behaviors towards her, including making unwanted phone calls and sending threatening text messages. Additionally, it was alleged that he covertly installed a keystroke logger on her computer, aiming to gain unauthorized access to her private and personal accounts. Dennis eventually moved on and remarried a woman named Shannon Jackson. However, this relationship would also end in divorce. Shortly after, he met Cynthia, and the two began a whirlwind romance. This culminated in them tying the knot in Las Vegas on December 7, 2018. The newlyweds then moved to a cozy two-story home on Rosalie Drive in Denham Springs, Louisiana. On the surface, they appeared to epitomize the ideal couple, with both enjoying thriving careers in public service. Unbeknownst to their friends and colleagues, Cynthia and her husband harbored a secret life that was beyond reprehensible. This would all come to light in the fall of 2019. On September 23, 2019, the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation Cybercrime Unit received an alarming report about the online distribution of abhorrent media files. Acting swiftly on this tip, the LBI traced the IP address of the individual uploading these reprehensible photos and videos. Their thorough investigation ultimately pinpointed Dennis and Cynthia Perkins' residence in Denham Springs as the source. As the LBI agents performed background checks on the couple, they were astonished to find out that Dennis was a high-ranking officer at the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Having gathered enough evidence against Dennis, LBI agents then obtained a warrant to arrest him and search his Denham Springs home. On October 22, 2019, in an effort to assist LBI agents with executing the arrest warrant on his colleague, Major Alden Thomason of the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office tried to contact Dennis via his home phone. However, Dennis was on a fishing expedition with his friends at Toledo Bend Lake in Sabine Parish, Louisiana. Major Thomason eventually got a hold of him through his department-issued cell phone, and the two agreed to meet at an undisclosed location. Realizing he was in deep trouble, Dennis quickly disposed of the company-provided cell phone by throwing it into the lake. Then, using a friend's phone, Dennis contacted Major Thomason and arranged to meet at an alternate location. Accompanied by several LBI agents, Major Thomason convened with Dennis at the newly agreed-upon venue. There, Dennis was read his rights and consented to be interviewed on the spot. Initially, he did his best to cooperate and answer a few questions. He even admitted to discarding his phone into the lake shortly before the meeting. He claimed that the phone contained suggestive pictures of his wife and that he didn't want the agents to see them. However, in reality, the phone also had illicit images he desperately wished to conceal from authorities. When confronted with the disturbing photos traced to his IP address, Dennis declined to respond and invoked his right to an attorney. Subsequently, he was formally apprehended by the Sabine Parish Sheriff's Office on charges of obstruction of justice. After several hours, he was transferred to Livingston Parish Jail under the warrant issued by the LBI. That same day, another group of LBI agents conducted a search of the Perkins residence on Rosalie Drive. As they went through the house, the authorities found a safe full of laptops, hard drives, and thumb drives. All of these were encrypted, so forensics immediately worked on gaining access. 
and what they discovered was deeply unsettling. In addition to the images that were initially reported, the LBI uncovered other disturbing files that were locally saved in the devices. These included videos depicting voyeurism, photos of Dennis acting improperly in public settings, and clips of him contaminating pastries with bodily fluids. There was also a picture of Cynthia's students eating the pastries, but among the most repulsive of the files involved a particular person who used to live with the couple. Due to the horrific nature of this crime, the person's identity and relationship with the couple were withheld from the public. The photos and videos the authorities found involved Cynthia and Dennis using this victim in the most disgusting manner. For instance, one video showed the couple recording the person's body while she slept. Another clip depicted the two having marital relations in front of their victim. At one point during the act, Cynthia forced the person to touch her husband. Among the worst of the videos showed Cynthia holding the person's head still while Dennis used her. The victim can be seen sobbing quietly throughout the ordeal. As a result of these significant discoveries, the LBI agents deemed it necessary to revoke the initial arrest warrant issued for Dennis Perkins and amend it to include additional charges. Moreover, upon uncovering her involvement in the crimes, the officers promptly secured an arrest warrant for Cynthia. She wasn't home at the time, so the agents carried on with their search while they waited for her. Cynthia eventually returned home late in the evening, unaware that there was already an existing warrant for her arrest. Upon her arrival, authorities promptly informed her of her rights, and she willingly agreed to some questioning. Initially, she claimed that she didn't have a clue why they were there. However, when the agents showed her the videos they uncovered earlier, Cynthia stopped responding to questions. The LBI agents then apprehended her and transported her to Livingston Parish Jail, where her husband already was at this point. In the ensuing weeks, the LBI diligently pressed on with their investigation. Their efforts eventually paid off as they were able to unearth the entirety of this couple's criminal activities. As it turned out, Dennis's misdeeds date as far back as the 90s. In July 1998, Dennis applied as an officer for the Baton Rouge Police Department. Part of the hiring process involved taking a polygraph test. It was during this phase that Dennis admitted to sleeping with someone younger than him. Furthermore, he also confessed to public misbehavior, soliciting intimacy, and attempting to commit credit card fraud. Following these revelations, every board member reached a unanimous decision to refrain from hiring Dennis, with one member even going so far as to inscribe, definitely do not hire, in the recommendation spot. Somehow, he was able to land a job at Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office in 2002. This was largely due to the backing of Sheriff Jason Ard, who ignored obvious red flags. Dennis would even rise the ranks, but this didn't stop him from his criminal activities. In 2013, Lieutenant Todd Webb of the Baton Rouge PD approached Sheriff Ard with troubling concerns regarding Dennis. This involved his stepdaughter, who participated in a sleepover at Dennis's home. Although Dennis displayed unsettling behavior toward Lieutenant Webb's stepdaughter, he did not technically violate any laws. Consequently, Sheriff Ard refrained from reprimanding him, and no disciplinary actions were taken against him. When Dennis found out about Lieutenant Webb's report, he tried to intimidate the latter's family when he spotted them at a gas station. A year later, another police from the Baton Rouge PD reported Dennis, this time for allegedly having an affair with the officer's wife. Moreover, Dennis was also said to have exhibited creepy behavior towards his daughter, but as with Lieutenant Webb's complaint, not much came from this report. Dennis once again emerged unscathed, and he would only be emboldened to commit more atrocities. On November 8, 2014, Dennis subjected a woman to horrific acts with the help of another individual named Melanie Curtin, who was a co-worker at Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Dennis and Melanie even took videos of this barbaric act, and those footage were part of the five terabytes worth of filth the LBI found in Dennis's electronic devices. Dennis was able to evade prosecution for this crime because the victim never pressed charges. She had no recollection of what happened because Dennis and Melanie sedated her before they committed the offense. As for Cynthia, it turned out that she also harbored unsettling secrets even before she met Dennis. The person who was in the files discovered by the LBI had been living with Cynthia since the mid-2010s. During a police interview in late 2019, she revealed that Cynthia had been maltreating her for years. In one particular instance in 2016, Cynthia dragged her by the hair into the bathroom, slammed her face against the wall, and hurled her to the ground. All these were then followed by a barrage of slaps and hits. Additionally, she recounted waking up to find Cynthia sitting on her bed, glaring at her with a menacing expression. Moreover, Cynthia unjustly held her responsible for the breakdown of her past relationship. The ordeal she suffered at the hands of Cynthia only got worse when the latter married Dennis in late 2018. 
The videos that the investigators found involving her were all taken between April 1st and July 31st, 2019. In addition, LBI agents also discovered a note on Cynthia's phone detailing the abhorrent things they were planning to do with the woman. Furthermore, there was one clip that showed the couple role-playing, with Cynthia wearing the victim's uniform and pretending to be her. It was unclear how the victim managed to escape the Perkins residence, but she was no longer living there at the time of Cynthia and Dennis's arrest in late 2019. The couple's depravity, however, didn't stop there. As newlyweds in late 2018, they invited a female friend to their house for a get-together. The woman then came over with her daughter and mingled with the couple for a while. According to her, the couple gave her a drink, and she fell asleep soon after. She woke up the next morning in one of the house's bedrooms with no recollection of what happened the night before. When she asked Cynthia about it, the latter told her that she took care of her and her daughter. Cynthia also assured her that she had nothing to worry about. It turned out the couple gave her a sedative and proceeded to use her while she was unconscious. This was reminiscent of what Dennis and Melanie did back in 2014, as the incident was also recorded on the couple's mobile phone. The LBI also uncovered voyeurism clips involving another person who briefly stayed at the couple's house in early 2019. And as further proof of just how twisted this couple was, there was also a video of Dennis doing vile acts to their pet dog. On December 17, 2019, Dennis and Cynthia were indicted on over 70 felony counts each, amounting to a total of 150 charges between them. Two days later, Cynthia initiated divorce proceedings to dissolve her marriage. According to her lawyer, Cynthia revealed how her husband made threats against her and that she was fearful of him. That same month, the parents of Cynthia's students sued the couple for feeding their children with suspicious pastries. As the Perkins couple awaited trial, some good news happened when the local police were able to arrest Melanie Curtin in early 2020. Curtin was also a resident of Denham Springs, but she had been on a cruise ship. She returned in February 2020 and was apprehended by the authorities. Like Cynthia and Dennis, she was also detained at Livingston Parish Jail. Surprisingly, her trial took place ahead of the Perkins couple. In December 2021, a two-day trial took place where she was eventually found guilty of all charges against her. She was then sentenced to life in prison. Three months later, on February 14, 2022, Cynthia Perkins opted to accept a plea deal. As part of the agreement, she agreed to testify against her former husband, Dennis, and in return, she would be sentenced to 41 years in prison. Additionally, she wouldn't be eligible for parole until the last year of her sentence. During the sentencing, Cynthia spoke and apologized to all the victims. She also extended an apology to her first husband, James Jones, whom she referred to as her soulmate. Moreover, she conveyed her love to her three children from that marriage, none of whom had spoken to her since their divorce. After Cynthia spoke, her parents, Gregory and Angela Thompson, took turns reading statements to defend her. They said that, while they do not condone their daughter's actions, they also believe she was manipulated by her husband into committing those crimes. Essentially, they attempted to portray their daughter in a favorable light while shifting all the blame onto her former husband, Dennis. Nonetheless, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson did apologize to the couple's primary victim, the person who had been staying with Cynthia since the mid-2010s. They expressed their love for her and acknowledged her as a member of their family. They also wished for her recovery from the nightmare she had gone through. The father of the victim then presented to the court a letter penned by her. In the letter, she expressed that her life had significantly improved since she escaped the Perkins couple's oppressive household. She also called Cynthia a selfish and horrible person and wished that she rot in jail. She further added that the reason she wrote the letter was to let Cynthia know that she never broke her down. Dennis Perkins was slated to go on trial on January 9, 2023. However, in a surprising turn of events, on January 3, 2023, his legal team offered a plea deal during a hearing held at the Livingston Parish Courthouse. This was a move that surprised the prosecution team but they nonetheless welcomed it. We didn't really offer him a plea deal. What happened was we were we were contacted by the defense. They made an offer. And at that point, we considered it. And after some tinkering, uh, we were able to come to an agreement that was accepted. The prosecutors also disclosed that they consulted with each victim involved in the case, seeking their approval before accepting the plea deal. All of them gave their blessing to go ahead with it. As part of the deal, Dennis Perkins pleaded guilty to several, but not all of the charges against him. Perkins' defense attorney opted not to speak to us, instead texting a statement saying, Mr. Perkins accepted responsibility for his acts and did not accept responsibility for anything he did not do. Nevertheless, the crimes he admitted to were enough for him to receive a sentence of 100 years in prison. 
This effectively ensured that he would spend the rest of his life behind bars. In addition, he is ineligible for parole or the right to appeal. This development brought relief to all of Dennis's victims, sparing them the need to take the stand and recount the harrowing ordeal they had endured. During the legal proceedings, Dennis spoke up and expressed remorse for his actions. He also claimed that he had found God while in prison. He further added that Jesus had already forgiven him of all his sins and wished for everyone affected to find it in their hearts to do the same. While the authenticity of Dennis Perkins's statement may be questionable, what matters is that the victims have attained some measure of closure with his sentencing. Nearly four years after the arrest of Cynthia and Dennis Perkins for their appalling crimes, justice has finally been served. Uh, we felt satisfied that this accomplished justice um, and we were able to, to get a win uh, without putting the victims in this entire community you know, through the rigors uh, of that trial that was going to happen next week. Anything else that you guys would like to add just about anything else with the victims or their families that are dissatisfied with this? Or? Only that they've been through hell and they're just as satisfied to see all of this come to a conclusion and justice prevail so that they can hopefully move forward and not have to look back ever again. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.